Hello friends, this is the Thrift Flip Road Trip and this is the Casey, Illinois edition. Our host is the Crafty Cousins and Unicorn Dust Designs. And the guest host is Crafting with Indiana Jones. Please check out their channel and the playlist in the description box for more fun thrift flip. I bought one just to, well I bought two of them actually. And I thought since I'm practicing painting my chickens, that hopefully I will have one of these in my sale tonight. We'll see if it turns out. Maybe I'll be able to bring you up over here. So it is a fantastic day to stay inside, stay warm, and shop from the comfort of your home over on Virtual Home Decor Marketplace. It's great that we have, you know, nobody would want to get out on a day like that today and go to a craft show, even if you could find a craft show in this frigid, cold weather. Sherry's got snow coming in. Um, Alice, I think that's about where we're at. Actually, I think it was seven degrees today, but you're a little bit colder than we are. Let's see how I did this darn thing. But in, in fact, when I came over this morning, my pellet stove had went out and that other, what is that? Um, you know, where it, I can't remember the name of it, where it heats and cools. It's not keeping up because I got these tall ceilings in here and the lofts. So, I worked for a little bit today and had to go home and get in a hot bath. And then I went and took a nap underneath the uh, electric blanket. Then by the time I got back over here, it's still not warm, warm, but I can deal with it with the space heater beside me. That makes it a little bit easier. We don't have much snow at all. There's a light dusting, but it's just plain cold. There ain't no, uh, nothing good about it, but that's for sure. I would almost rather have snow and 35 or 30, 20 degrees. Even yesterday at 20 wasn't as bad as it is today. I would take the snow over the cold. These frigid temperatures are crazy and we've got it until Tuesday. In fact, Mary Ann may warm up before we do. Okay, last night I put long hairs on my chicken and I got called out for it from some friends. It was a nice call out. I guess a chicken has feathers, not long hair. 12 degrees where you are, Sherry. It's just, it's a great day to stay inside and watch Virtual Home Decor Marketplace. You can't go anywhere. There's nothing, shoot, even if you can go somewhere, then you have to worry about your car getting overly cold and kind of nice here that kids don't have school tomorrow being Martin Luther King's birthday. Okay, let me try to make these a little bit shorter.
I can't really tell that they're short versus long. Ugh. Edited videos all day. Oh, that's fun. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Lorraine. Watch me do my thing. It's like my one thing. In one of my mastermind groups, or not my mastermind, my just one of my business groups, our homework for this week is to read a book called The One Thing. And I had already, I already had it in my Audible library. I had actually started it a while back and never finished it. But it's like, you know, how you have book club. And it's like, what's the one thing, if you couldn't do anything else, what's, what's your one thing? Well, we all know my one thing is painting. It's <laughs> not even a question. It's the only thing I can do. Although I did make banana bread today. But I put my butter in the microwave so that it would be melted. And guess what I did? I was multitasking, so I forgot to take the butter out of the microwave and put it in the darn banana bread batter. Luckily, I'd put some uh, sour cream in there, so hopefully that kind of... I haven't tried it since it came out of the oven. I was like, you know... I should have concentrated on making the banana bread because my mind doesn't work hardly at all when it comes to baking. And the thing is, I doubled the recipe and I made two bread pans full and then I made a cake pan full and it's like, great. One, and it's not like it was a minimal amount of butter. It was three quarters cup times two, what, one and a half sticks of butter. I should have just made popcorn. Instead, you know what I did? Popcorn would have been good. Instead, I took saltine crackers and dipped it in butter. <laughs> so that was my lunch today. Saltine crackers dipped in melted butter. And actually, it was really good. <laughs> I, I could live on bread more than I can candy. It is amazing. And I've noticed we, the other day when I went to Aldi's, I bought saltine crackers because usually I get them at the dollar store. And all these crackers are so delicate. They're the most amazing crackers ever. They're crunchy, they're just perfect. So I'll never buy my crackers anywhere else now from now on. You know, and I'm sure they're Their stuff's a lot fresher with so many people buying it, but. Fifty-eight degrees. Holy cow, Wanda, enjoy. Hi, Brenda. A cooking channel. Nah, that's not very good when I forget the butter. And I only did it because I had bananas that were really overripe, you know, when they're perfect for that. So my decision of the day was, do I take a few minutes and make banana bread or do I throw them away? And at this point, I'm thinking I should have just thrown them away. But we will see. We shall see how it turns out. And, you know, I usually crave things like that. But if I make it, I'm never hungry for it. 
It's so weird. If I bake it, I never eat it. It's like, okay, well, that urge has now gone after I spent 30 minutes dirtying every dish in the house to make banana bread. And then I ate my weight in gold with the crackers and I, I ate a full sleeve of saltine crackers dipped in butter. So. Sandy. You love banana bread? I do too, but Kathy, it looks better with the shorter things, huh? <laughs> oh, Sherry, I love it. My grandma used to make that. Instead of Rice crispy, she'd put popcorn in it, and that was how she made her popcorn balls. <sighs> I'm kind of stuck at the moment on, over at our Amish store, you can get cinnamon glaze to put on top of your popcorn. So you um, turn your popcorn into that candied cinnamon taste. Oh, that's to die for too. So anyway, back to my book about the one thing, because I can't think of one thing at a time. It said to do every day the one thing that you're most known for. So it's like every day I should get up, and the first thing I should do every day is paint at least one painting a day. So, because sometimes I go... I only paint a couple times a week. Because I want to do all the other things on top of painting. I want to do it all. So before book club... That's my goal starting tomorrow morning is go live and paint one thing. Even if I don't go live because even if it, I hate to paint and it doesn't turn out. And that does happen quite a bit. It's like just because I paint doesn't mean it always comes out. Now it's kind of like when people ask me to do a lettering thing. It's like if I haven't lettered for four or five days before I try to teach other people to paint, to letter, it ain't gonna happen. Because I gotta get myself back in the habit of doing it. Surely there's gotta be a brush that would do this easier. Let me try this. I'm not a chicken painter. Hey, candy. Yellow cake mix, two eggs, bananas. Oh! That sounds easy enough. Kathy Kirkland, you need that sewing machine out. Kathy is on the marketplace and she posted some rabbits that she sews. And I think yesterday she had probably 20 different orders. And it's like, there you go. That's your one thing. Look at how many orders you're getting for sewn items. It's like there's so much more competition, I believe, in the painting world than there is in the sewing world. Because you got to be pretty darn good at what you do in order to sew, I think. And when I saw how many people were ordering her rabbit, I'm like, well, there's her one thing that she needs to focus on. 
because you know what? There's not too many people that do that. Seems like everybody paints or everybody, you know, maybe does faux food or whatever the, the thing is, but Kathy is really quick and fast at painting. All right, I mean, it's sewing. And she could stay busy all the time just sewing and not having to worry about cutting wood or, you know, her husband cutting wood, any of that. It would be so much easier to ship. It would... Yeah. You can't damage a sewn item. <laughs> hey, Marcy. I know Marcy's got that big thing. <laughs> Marcy's the worst, I think. I bet you're sewing big time after all those orders you got. And then I'm like, if you got up and sewed every day, you'd sell so much sewing stuff that you wouldn't have time to have to worry about painting. And, and I know how it is because, like Marcy, I want to sublimate. I pretty much decided I'm not too much in the Glowforge business at all. But I want to be in the sublimating world. Maybe. No, actually, keeping my focus on the one thing, and that's my painting group. That's me painting and growing my painting group. And my coach last year told me, he's like, mm, you're fishing out of everybody else's pond. You need to keep your focus on what you do best. And you know what? I followed his guidelines and I had an amazing launch that, and it's like, well, instead of painting all the things, I need to just concentrate on my painting group and let all the other things go. So that's my goal is to do that four to six times every year. So that's kind of my goal. <laughs> I know, I get bored doing the same thing too. Oh, Darlene, I, I, Kathy does really well. And even if it's not so much per piece, it's that she's, you know, I know on her post, there was 15 to 20 people that bought that rabbit. Well, if you can line up your material and you cut them all at the same time, you sew the same lines and you make it assembly line style, then it's good. And she, she just posted them and it's like automatically right away people wanted to buy them. It wasn't even a thing of, they just wanted them because there's not too many people that do that. As long as you have the right audience and Kathy has taken the time to develop her audience on the marketplace, they know what a good job she does. She's, well, you know, she sold several thousands probably on the marketplace. So, so she has the reputation and that's the thing is, you know, I could probably sit down and so if I really wanted to, I don't want to, and I'm not known for sewing. You, you got to market yourself. Marketing is the number one thing about your business because if people love the things you sew if they like your products just like kathy she goes she goes i got these and everybody's signing up you can go to the marketplace and you can see i mean that's what we say about virtual home decor marketplace is we can't lie about what we make because you can go over there and you can see the post and you can read the comments under there of people saying can i still get one can I have another one? Whatever. Some lady ordered three of them in different colors. So there are people that will pay. There are a lot of people that will pay because we see it all the time on the marketplace. It's a buying group. Those people come there to buy. They're not there for, you know, some of them come, you know, just to watch. They're entertained, but it's, it's a nice buying crowd. And, you know, I doubt that we could have started that today, but we started it in a really good time and people know that. 
<sighs> See, Darlene, you should focus on the one thing. I know it does it does I I couldn't you know it's like I always say about those darn trucks that now I have to paint again it's like it it crushes your creativity by continuing to do the same things but you have to figure too if you have a job for eight hours a day you have to do the same thing basically let let and I don't mean this saying whatever, but if you went to a factory every day, what do you do for eight hours? Sometimes you have overtime. What is that one thing you have to do over and over and over for eight hours out of the day, but then you go home and you got another six or seven hours that you can do what you enjoy. So it's not like, you know, it's like when you had a job, you had to go to a job and you did the same things every day. And that's what you know, people will ask, don't you get tired of painting? And I want to say, but I got tired of going into the lawyer's office for 14 years and typing out bankruptcies and wills and divorces. And we did the same three things for 14 years. And I was like, if I have to make, because back then you had to make eight copies of a bankruptcy and they were about 30 to 40 pages and it was the most daunting, repetitive, repetitive work ever. So we all get tired of our jobs, whether we are self-employed or if we have to get out and get a job. Because, you know, if I worked at McDonald's, I'd have to sit there and wait on customers every day. If I went to Walmart, I'd have to stand there and check out all day long. And yeah, you do get tired of that kind of stuff, but you have to make a living too. You can't go to Walmart and say, oh, today I wanna to be over in the dressing room department. Oh, today I wanna to go do this. They don't let you do that. And that's where being self-employed gets a lot of people because being self-employed, you don't have anybody telling you what to do. You can decide for yourself. And you can decide whether you want to get up at 7 in the morning because you know what? When you have a job and they tell you to be there at 7 in the morning, guess what? You're there at 7 in the morning. When you're self-employed and you want to start the habit of getting up at 7 in the morning, you can look at the alarm clock and you go, oh, I thought I wanted that. I just want to go back to bed. And you go back to bed. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Ann. Uh, Janice, are you a paralegal? I was too, for 14 years right out of high school. I was one before, that That was 1982, and we were the second law firm to ever go with a computer. And back then it was word processors. And I still took shorthand and still used a dictaphone and did all the things, but you know what? Between, it was me and one attorney and five different law offices. And if I would commit myself to work as hard for myself as what I worked for him, it'd be crazy the difference my job would have if I put in the same dedication. I mean, we were so busy that there was one time that I didn't take a vacation for like three or four years. We were just, but I loved what I did, but I don't, I don't have that dedication for myself. <laughs> now I still get a lot done. I'm not saying that I don't, but I could do so much better if I would focus on the one thing, so. No, retirement's not wonderful. I, I really, in fact, I was just talking to a friend about this. Retire, retirement would be good if I have to work. I'm 62 and it's not a, I have to have a business. Otherwise, I'd have to go get a job. And 
So, yeah, there's that. I have, I have no 401k or anything like that. I've been self-employed for 25, 26 years now. So it's like, I don't have an option, but even if I could retire, I couldn't imagine not wanting to still do something. So, but, but I love doing what I do now. So would I do it? When I start all over and do it back in the day, Kathy Kirkland and I did craft shows together for years. And would I go back to the craft show world if I had a choice? Absolutely never in my life would I have ever done that again. <laughs> never. That was the hardest job I've ever had was doing craft shows. With my husband, raised our kids. We were all four together 24-7. 35 to 40 craft shows a year. I I always say that if I pass away and I get a chance to go up there and God says, you have a choice. You can either stay here or you can go back and you can live your life exactly every single detail that you did before. I would say, nope, I'm good. I'm good. Just let me stay here. I don't want to go do that again. <laughs> I'd never want to redo it again. Um, I know. I work harder now, but I'm not as organized as I was. I'm not near as organized. We ran off checklist on everything. I mean, I could do a bankruptcy and I would have to take a Xerox copy of the person's license, driver's license, so that when the attorney showed up in bankruptcy court, he could see what the people looked like. He never even met with them. Most of them. Now, I'm not saying that all of them. He must met with most of them, but we were like the... Back when... It was just when lawyers started advertising. So, we were like the $300 bankruptcy people, and we had it down to the science. Sometimes I went to court with them. Sometimes he did. It, it was amazing all that we got accomplished. But we were also, I don't have any organizing abilities anymore. I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> no organizabilities whatsoever. Okay, I got a chicken done. So this little chicken, oh, I really want a word here. I want a word. Let's see what this. Is. These little feathers that Kathy likes. We'll put little feathers out there. And then I'm going to show you what I got coming up on my sale tonight. No, I'm not an attorney. I worked for an attorney. But when you file bankruptcy, there is no real judge involved. You go in front of, at the time, um, they were called, I don't 
Um, anyway, the guy was a real estate agent. And he could, he just went in and sat at a table with him. And it, there was no judge in charge of a bankruptcy. Um, I eh, can't remember the name of them. But so I could go in because they'd only ask you questions if, or ask the client questions if they had, you know, a question about the form that I filled out. So it wasn't like it was, it's not really a courtroom. It's, it's a room inside of the courthouse. I don't know if they still do it that way. No, it wasn't an arbitrator. He was a... Ah, I don't even remember what he was now. But his real, he just showed up whenever we had bankruptcies because we'd take in 20 or 30 bankruptcies in Springfield, Illinois, and then we did it in um, Danville, Illinois, were the two areas for bankruptcy. So we would take 20 to 30 people to each courthouse once a month. It was a big thing back in the 80s. A big, uh, I've lost track of the bankruptcy world since then, but I don't know how it's ran today, but it sure made me learn how to uh, use my finances because most of the people that filed bankruptcy all had really good jobs. You didn't see too many poor people filing bankruptcy.